So in this day and age, when you're building a software system, often your API services have to talk to a variety of third-party services, maybe a database. In my case, I have an icon generator application that needs to talk to Dolly. So there's a lot of network requests that need to happen. And because of that, there's a lot of stuff that could go wrong. So one way to mitigate issues is by doing something called retries. And more specifically, I want to talk a little bit about what exponential backoffs are when you're dealing with retries. So of course, I think the best way to kind of exemplify this is by drawing a diagram. I'll just go ahead and say you have an API here. Um, we could also just say we have a user here for like the UI. Okay, so you have users in your application. They're going to connect to your API and maybe do a post request. Now that API, depending on how complex your API logic needs to be, you're more than likely going to talk to a database. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make a database here. And you could be doing multiple queries or post requests to that database depending on how complicated that API endpoint is. Now in some of the endpoints I've built, you'll also be talking to a file storage. So in our case, I'm doing like AWS S3 to store files that the user may upload to your API or your API may generate some type of text files, CSV files, PDF files, and they need to upload those somewhere. Um, and then also you may be integrating with a third party API. I'll be kind of talking in the context of my icon generator. When you try to generate an icon, I have a couple of retry logic set up when talking to OpenAI API to make sure that if something were to go wrong, um, like rate limiting, the thing would just continue to retry. So as you may already know, a single API endpoint can do a lot of different logic. And one way to make sure that if any of these things were to fail for a sporadic reason, that your API is resilient enough to retry that request if it's not on a super critical error, right? One common scenario is rate limiting. So for example, if you're dealing with third party API, um, OpenAI says that you can do like X amount of image generations every minute. Now, if those users all generate icons around the same time and you know your Dolly API starts throwing rate limiting exceptions, one approach is you just throw that error and you show the user and say, hey, you know, try again in 20 seconds. Now, most good APIs will return a specific status code and tell you when you can retry again. But if you want to be lazy or just kind of wrap everything in a retry, you could potentially do that so that your user just maybe might see a spinner for a little bit longer, but they don't have to go and manually click a generate button again. All of that issues that are happening under the hood, that's kind of abstracted away from them and obscured. They just know that something's take a little bit longer and that'll get retried behind the scenes for you. And the same stuff could happen with, I don't know, for example, uh, writing to S3. Um, AWS SDKs typically have a bunch of exponential backoff retries built into the SDK. So if you're using like the Node SDK for communicating with AWS, under the hood in the implementation details, they are using exponential backoff retries when you try to do various actions on their um, resources. Same thing with the database. Something can go wrong with your database. Maybe it got overwhelmed. There's a short burst of activity. And now your database can't handle all that traffic and your requests just fail for whatever reasons. So you could potentially add retry behavior inside of your code that's trying to communicate with these um, services. So if something goes wrong, it just retries and retries and retries until it finishes. So there is an issue with just instantly retrying when stuff goes wrong. If for whatever reason, uh, one of these services were to go wrong. Let's say, you know, the Dolly API were to go down. Now you have potentially all of your users are using your API and your API is going to continuously just keep on retrying. Every time it makes a request that gets a failure, it's going to retry again and infinitely just basically flood this API with requests, which can cause an issue. The third party API might mark you as like trying to do some type of DDoS or some type of malicious um, actions. But if this is a service that you own yourself, you don't want to flood your own services with tons of requests because it's going to have a lot of issues coming back online. Let's say if it's a node server that for some reason crashed because, I don't know, you had some bad path in the logic. But if you imagine there could be like, you know, thousands of these, right? Now all of a sudden they're just flooding your microservice with requests. And whenever that microservice were to come back online, now it's going to get a ton of requests at the same time and potentially bring it back down. So doing retries is good, but more specifically, you want to add in something called exponential backoff. So what exponential backoff is, it's basically a way to add a delay using a mathematical formula so that every additional delay is more time, right? So for example, here's a nice little table that kind of exemplifies what I'm talking about. The first retry is going to take two seconds of backoff time. So it's going to retry and then it waits two seconds. The second time, it's going to wait a total of four seconds after that retry attempt is made. So now you've waited a total of six seconds. And then the third attempt is going to be eight. 
the fourth attempt will be 16, the fifth attempt will be 32 seconds. So notice how this is exponentially growing as the retries increase. And this is basically to prevent that scenario where you have a bunch of API requests that are just constantly retrying over and over again and flooding your services with retries, right? You want to basically tell your API or your own UI, hey, you know, hold off a little bit, wait for the downstream service to come back online, wait for whatever issues to resolve themselves, and then you can try again in, you know, 32 seconds. Now, at a certain point, the retries are going to be so long that you're going to have to probably do something different in your UI to give a better user experience. Maybe you want to, you know, just allow the user to cancel the request if it takes too long. Maybe you want to just make that an asynchronous process and you can just send them a WebSocket event when all this stuff is done if something is that complicated, if you're doing all these requests from a single API. But overall, this is the approach um, that you can take in that, you know, the SDK of AWS also takes. Now for my side projects, I have always used this node promise retry package. It's really useful. You basically just import it and you can just run any type of asynchronous promise. You can configure it with like the maximum number of retries it does, um, various mathematical coefficients that basically change, you know, how fast the retries happen, how long are the delays between the retries, uh, max timeout, min timeout, etc. You can also randomize it too, right? So that all your users aren't just like delaying for the long, uh, the same amount of times. So I want to show you, I do use promise retry in my project and how I do it is with the Dolly API. So if you notice down here, I have this, this code that basically tries to do a fetch request against OpenAI. And if for whatever reason, I get back a 429 status code, um, that is basically a rate limiting error code. I'm basically going to say, hey, you know, just wait for two seconds and then retry again using this exponential back off approach. And this will continue to retry up to the default of whatever this package is, which I think is 10 until Dolly resets my rate limiting for my account. And then hopefully the request will make it through, right? So the reason I add this again is so that my users don't have to go and rerun it when something like that happens. I rather just show them a spinner and then when this is actually done retrying and finally we get a request through, I can show the results to the user. So retries are something that are very important when it comes to building resilient systems. I definitely recommend that um, you read more about this and start using it in your own processes. But that's about it. I just want to share this with you all. Hopefully you guys learned something new by watching this. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And then also leave a comment if this is the package you like to do in your Node.js applications. Let me know uh, if you have a different approach or a different package you use. Let me know as well. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And like always, i got a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to kind of hang out or ask questions to other developers. Have a good day. Happy coding.